hopefully in the next few weeks I'll have a working chassis uh, finished with this. <laughs> Hi friends, welcome back to the workshop. Oh, it's been a minute since I've made a video. There, uh, you know, life gets in the way of priorities like building amps, unfortunately, sometimes. But, I keep working on them. Anyway, happy to, to have you back and uh, really gratified to have some of you reach out to me and say, hey, we'd like to hear more about uh, some of the projects that you've worked on. I actually had a couple this summer that took me a long time. They weren't very complicated amps, but the problem was when you're working with small chassis particularly, uh, lead dress becomes a problem. You really have to cram 10 pounds of stuff into a 5 pound sack. So it's hard to move the wires around to the point where you don't have some noise and oscillations an issue when you cram wires into a small space uh, and run signal through them. So that that definitely in both cases was a factor in, in terms of time working uh, working out how to how to quiet those amps down. But the amp we're talking about today is the uh, what I call the Winchester, inspired by the Watkins Westminster. The Westminster was student amp. Amp. And if you've never seen one, uh, watch this video. It'll tell you kind of about my project and a little bit more about the amp. Um, they were English amps from the 1960s, very small, definitely geared toward the student market. Um, but they sound good. People collect them these days. They fetch a pretty good price. Um, all of them are 220 and need to be used with a transformer that uh, will bump the U.S. Uh, if you're using it here, if you're using it in the UK, you can just plug it right into the wall. But uh, if you're using it here, you need a transformer that's going to bump the uh, electricity up from 120 to 220. As you'll recall, I used some old Soviet 6F5P tubes uh, for this project. And I, I have to say, I was um, pleasantly surprised at how it ended up. The tubes themselves are pretty beefy uh, for a, a combination triode pintoed and they are definitely tubes that are going to stand the test of time. Also, if you remember, I did not include a tremolo circuit in this amp. Um, it was uh, one of those things that the original had that I did I just did not have room for. When you're working with small chassis, again, um, you have to lower the parts count. So I eliminated the, the, the tremolo circuit and uh, changed the input from a, a 12AX7 or ECC83, I believe they used in the original um, 12AX7, same thing, and 
changed it to uh, 6J32P, which is an old Soviet version of the EF86 uh, input pin toad. If you're familiar with Vox amps, they used a lot of EF86s. Uh, there were a few others that, that did, but it's, I, I think it's a really cool uh, tube to use for input. And the, um, the 6J32Ps have uh, so far I haven't had an issue with microphonics or anything with the ones I've used. I've used two or three. Not, it's not like I've used a hundred, so I don't know. They could have microphonic problems somewhere, but the ones I've used have been pretty good. Uh, let's, let's go and see how the schematic finally turned out in the end. All right, let's take a look at a few of the changes, actually uh, all the changes I've made since the original video on the schematic on there. Um, one, we went from a 68K resistor at the input to 100K, uh, which actually is more in line with the original Westminster schematic. Um, right here on the power section, uh, prior to the preamp pentode, um, went down to a 2.7K resistor from a 47K resistor on the original. Here also, uh, there was a 10K resistor, again, 2.7K, uh, that's a 2 watt resistor. Also a 2.7K 10 watt resistor to the screens of the power tubes. Uh, here's another change, uh, 300 ohm 5 watt resistor uh, immediately after the first capacitor, the first power capacitor, filtering capacitor, uh, whatever you'd like to call it. That made the power section work really well, as did the EZ80 or 6V4. Um, the EZ81 I've tried. Uh, it draws a little more power itself and uh, and provides some more power. Honestly, I didn't need it, and I liked the way the EZ80 performed, so uh, I just left it there. I'll save that uh, EZ81 for another project. A couple more changes. I went from a 390 uh, ohm resistor on the power uh, tube cathodes down to a 300 ohm resistor, 5 watt. Maybe the biggest divergence uh, I had also was the 5.6k grid stoppers that I added uh, to the inputs of the power tubes. Those those do not exist in the the Westminster, but I just found they stabilized everything just a just a little bit, and it it I I like the sound of it. The other thing, you know, let's take that take those away. This was originally a 25 microfarad um, capacitor bypass capacitor on the uh, power tube uh, cathode. And now it's a 47 uh, microfarad, um, and I think it was mostly because I had hanging around 25, certainly a, a, an acceptable um, value there. There is no tremolo circuit in this. That's also a divergence from the original Westminster. I love tremolo circuits, but I just did not have the space for it in this one. So anyway, um, basically what you get is a flavor. And now that I look at this, ignore this uh, little stray ground that I, I happen to leave in the, the schematic. That That is no good. So anyway, there you go. I will put the link to the updated schematic in the uh, description of this video. Let's go to the part of the video that everybody's been waiting for. Some bad guitar playing, and I mean very bad guitar playing. But uh, it'll give you an idea of how the amp sounds. So let's go hear it.
there you go. That's how it sounds. Uh, a few different guitars, and um, I'm pretty pleased with uh, with how it turned out. Here's a couple of pictures of it. Uh, I built a knock together a quick head cab for it, uh, just to kind of protect it. I usually play it with a 10 inch speaker, as I did in the video. I've got a 210 cabinet that I'm, that I'm in mind that I'd like to to build for it at some point, but uh, we'll get there. That's another project for another day. Really what happened with this amp was um, this one and, and the other one I was working on uh, kind of concurrently. I got it done. I did get it done in a, in a few weeks, um, but I had some noise issues and I had some oscillation that I needed to get rid of. And I really got obsessed uh, with getting rid of it before I could make the video. You know, sometimes you should not let uh, great get in the way of good. But it just bugged me. And the thing about these amps is sometimes you have the knowledge to fix them immediately. And sometimes you don't have it yet. So you have to put them away for, for a little bit until the, the solution comes to you. And the other thing is, is um, if these amps were easy to build... I don't think we'd learn anything from it. And I learned something new every time. In fact, I learned usually a lot of things that are new every time I build something. You wouldn't think that would happen with something that uh, is a really old proven technology, but uh, it does. We never stop learning on these projects. That's why we keep, we keep doing them uh, in large part. The other reason is to get good sound out of them. With that, I will, uh, I will bring this video to a close. If you like the amp content that you're seeing, please subscribe to the channel. Um, stay tuned. There's a lot more coming. I am uh, a few amps behind right now in terms of producing content for you guys. So uh, there's definitely a lot more to see. And uh, I will uh, keep working on it. And you guys, please keep building stuff. And if you'd like to comment, please do so down below. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, see you next video. Bye-bye.